unshakable and hallelujah, God, you have done great things. And hallelujah, God, I'm burning on hallelujah, God, unshakable. Welcome, 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 and a huge happy Easter to all of our St. Mark's family and to whoever else is tuning in today. You're so welcome to our Easter Sunday breakthrough service. We can't wait to see that all God is going to do in and through this service for all of us. I hope you've all got spoiled with Easter eggs, but I hope you've saved them for after dinner. Um, but you're going to be blessed today by some breakthrough songs that we're going to sing. You're going to hear some great breakthrough testimonies, breakthrough stories. We're going to see some breakthrough videos. And then Pastor Sean is going to bring a powerful breakthrough word for us. Before we go into that, let me just open up with a song or a chorus of a song that we're going to sing in a moment. And then I'll open up in prayer. And this is called Breakthrough. God, you're always breaking through the dark breaking into lives and healing hearts. Your love has torn the veil. Your love can never fail. Your love is making all things new. Guys, not only did Jesus Christ break through the grave and break through debt over 2,000 years ago, but he is still breaking through lives today in our world. And our hope and our prayer is that with this service, God would break through into all of our lives in new ways that we couldn't even imagine. So let me just open up in prayer and then we pass it over to the worship team. Father, we want to thank you for this great day. This is the day that you have made and we rejoice and we are glad in it, Lord God. We want to thank you for your wonderful presence. We want to thank you, Lord God, that your spirit is filling every home and every life as we worship you, Lord God. You inhabit the praises of your people. And so, Lord, we just give you this time. And we pray, come Holy Spirit, may your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth in our lives as it is in heaven. And all of God's people at home said, amen, amen, amen. Be blessed as we worship the King. Get it. 
Hi, my name is Linus, and I would like to share a short testimony how Jesus changed my life. So I grew up in a family where my father was an alcoholic and he was extremely violent when he was drunk. So I lived in the fear and, uh, and, and stress, constant stress. So in that, uh, of because of I lived in stress, I quickly grew up as well mentally, so I could provide to myself. As I age 15, I first time tasted uh, a beer and in great of my sadness, uh, I really enjoyed it to be uh, drunk, to have that drunk feeling with me. So when I turned up 19 years old, I turned up homeless as well. And one day my mom came to me and she handed over $100 bill to me and she told me, you could live the way you want or change your life. So I lived the way I wanted. I drank uh, every day. I, I did the crimes and I, sleep. I slept everywhere I could because I was homeless. So between 19 and 22 years, I lived the way I like it. And one day, my auntie approached me and she asked, she, she told me about the, the rehab center called Teen Challenge. And she said, if you like to go there to get the help, you know, they can help you with your addiction and your homelessness. So I agreed with my auntie and went there to, to see what is this place about. So I went there, I met a lot of people there, ex-drug addicts, they were talking about Jesus. They were sharing their testimonies how Jesus changed their lives. And they asked me, would I like to pray with them? I agreed to pray with them because I was, I was drunk and I was really brave to talk and be open with my issues. So I shared my life burdens that I'm homeless and I'm alcoholic and I want to quit. And they prayed. And three weeks later, they offered me a bed. So I was happy to accept this uh, offer from them and I, in my head I was talking, wow, now we're gonna have plenty food, uh, bed, and eventually I could have a shower because it was like, you wouldn't even imagine being homeless and being clean. So I was, I was delighted to have a shower. Uh, so I went there and I had a few cigarettes with me. So my plan was there to smoke, the last cigarette and to go there to go outside and, and to find out more smoke so three days later when my cigarettes were run out i went outside to get the smoke and in the middle of this walk i start to to feel something supernatural in me something strange happening in me i couldn't explain to myself i couldn't understand what's going on with me and i start to feel some emptiness in my mouth. And then I heard the voice of God. He said, Linus, you are a free man. You are, you, you, you are a free man from cigarettes. You are a free man from your, all your sins and from your all addictions. So in that moment, I returned back to the center and started glorifying God because he, he, he made me who I am now. 20 years later, I'm a very happy man, married with my beautiful Olga, wife Olga, and I have three kids with her. I work uh, in the church at the moment, and uh, I only could say to you people, if you are struggling and if you want to get breakthrough, you need to come to Jesus. To, the reason I am today sitting in this chair and sharing this testimony because of Jesus. 20 years ago, I was a hopeless person Today I am full of life in me because of Jesus set me free. I am filled of life from Him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we want to thank you for just again the gift of worship, Lord God. 
We want to thank you, Lord God, that you make the darkness tremble. We want to thank you, Lord God, that you silence fear, Lord. We want to thank you, Lord, that you cause our lungs to sing. Even as the song we just sung there, Lord God, you are the one who silences all of our fears. You are the one who causes the darkness to tremble. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the one who breaks through with your love, with your grace, with your mercies that are new every morning, Lord God. We are so grateful for your presence and we thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people, Lord God. And even as we worship you, Lord God, I thank you that you have been moving in people's lives and in people's hearts, Lord, and you are continuing to break through. And we pray that you continue to use this service, Lord God, the testimonies, Lord God, the, the breakthrough stories, the word that Sean's going to bring, that you would use that, Lord God, to bring breakthrough into all of our lives in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Guys, just a few announcements for us today. Just want, again, want to thank everyone who, for their consistent giving into the life of St. Mark's. We're so grateful for your giving, for uh, your sacrifice. We're so grateful that we can continue to do our online church. We continue to do all that God has called us to do at this time. Also to say, Kids Church, we hope that you've got your pack. We hope that you've got your goodie bag. Our Kids Church Easter party is straight after service. Uh, and so get ready for that. Leah and the team have an amazing party, an amazing time uh, ready for you. And it's going to be fantastic. And then also, guys, uh, what we've been announcing the last few weeks is our CCI conference is on the 9th and 10th of April. And again, if you haven't signed up for that, I don't know why, because this is going to be a fantastic conference. It's totally free. Uh, well, it's not free, as we've been saying. It's been, uh, CCI are taking the cost of it, but they're, get, they're offering it totally free. So again, I want to encourage you, sign up on the CCI website for this amazing conference. You are going to be absolutely blessed. Guys, hang on for our uh, final breakthrough story, uh, a breakthrough song, and then Pastor Sean is going to come and bring our Easter Sunday breakthrough message. My name is Emma Tucker, and this is my story from brokenness to breakthrough. So I grew up in a Christian home. Uh, I always would have went to church, but looking back now, I don't really think I ever had a reality of God. God was somebody maybe that I prayed to if I was doing an exam in school or something. So by the time I was in my late teens, I'd lost all interest. I stopped going to church and just started to do kind of what everyone else my age was doing, drinking and going out and, you know, all that sort of stuff, getting into relationships. Um, I had a great family and always would have done well in school and stuff, but it was just, I think there was something in me around that time that I was just rebelling against all of it. Um, I started college, but I found it really, really hard to, to mix with people. I used to just come and go and just kind of pretend I didn't care that I didn't have any friends there or whatever. I ended up failing that year and uh, I dropped out of college. And during the following year, then I was going out four nights out of seven. I was working in the shop. Um, so I was spending all the money I earned, like drinking and just on outfits for going out. It was an escape, I suppose. Um, I was just, you know, having fun with friends was my way of like filling the, the emptiness that, that I was feeling. Um, I didn't know where that emptiness had come from, but it, I was just trying to fill it with whatever I could. So that went on for years and the emptiness just turned to brokenness. The lack of self-confidence I had turned to, to self-hatred. I'd look in the mirror and hate what I saw. So I started trying to fix myself through diets, exercise, taking slimming tablets. Uh, I developed a really unhealthy relationship with food where I'd feel like if I had had, you know, a, a bad week, uh, I'd felt like I'd put on weight and people were, <coughs> people were looking at me and I'd feel ashamed and stuff. Looking back now, I know I was trying to fix a problem that I had on the inside by going to war with what was on the outside. Like it might sound superficial, but that's reality for a lot of people, you know, particularly women and young girls, you know, if there's something going on on the inside and you don't know how to deal with it, you just try to fix it from the outside in. I'd love to be able to say there was one moment of breakthrough for me where like a light bulb came on and everything changed, but it didn't work like that. Like in reality, there have been loads of little breakthroughs over the last eight or nine years or so, or so since I came back to church and came back to God. 
you know, and even coming back to church was gradual. There was some Sundays where I'd be too dying and I couldn't get out of bed. And then other Sundays I wasn't too bad. So, so I'd come in, um, you know, and I'd find that when I did come in, there would always be a word, you know, that I felt like was, was just for me and I'd leave with such peace. Uh, I remember one Sunday in particular, I was down the back where I always sat so I could leg it after the service and didn't have to talk to anyone. Um, and the worship was on and uh, I just got this feeling through my body and I just knew that it was God saying to me, I'm real and I can change your life from the inside out. I can make you whole, I can make you complete. And over the next year, like I'd come to church and I would just cry and cry and cry. And I felt like such a complete basket case. But like, I know that that was God just changing me and, you know, taking that brokenness and giving me those breakthroughs. And he is a God of breakthrough. Like, I don't feel that way about myself anymore. Thank God. Uh, you know, and now when I share with people that I used to, you know, struggle with those things, I'd say, oh, you know, you, you seem so confident. You'd never know that you battled all of that. But like, it was only through my relationship with Jesus that I was actually able to, to know who I am in him, to know my real identity and accept his love. And that was what made me whole. Um, like there's a well-known expression, people say, fake it till you make it. Like I couldn't fake it. I was a complete and total mess. For me, it was more like, break it till you make it. I had to allow God to break all of those things off my life. You know, those feelings of worthlessness, you know, negative thoughts, self-hatred, emptiness, loneliness, rejection, betrayal, unforgiveness, all of that. God broke all of that off my life. And I mean, there are still things that I'm praying for breakthrough in, but I know now that God can do it. Um, my breakthrough wouldn't have come without that brokenness, you know? And now when I think of Easter, what comes to mind is Jesus being broken before his breakthrough. His body had to be broken so he could break through sin, darkness and death, you know? And because he had that breakthrough, I can too.
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The land is overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. The land is Happy Easter, everyone. It's so great to be able to bring this service to you on this very special day. And I know we can't wait until, please God, Easter 2022, when we can meet physically again together. But we are going to make the best of this celebration and we are going to rejoice in this special time of the year, which is so critical for us as Christians. We understand that at the core of our faith is the importance of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And here we are on Resurrection Sunday and he is risen indeed. And we bless the Lord for that. I hope you're going to enjoy a great time in the house that you're in, uh, celebrating this great news with copious amounts of chocolate, great fellowship and a great time with the Lord. You know, when I was preparing for this, I got to thinking about an article that I read on a website called visualcapitalist, visualcapitalist.com. And uh, you're thinking, oh gosh, Shani, you're going all prosperity gospel. No, 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 it's got nothing to do with that. Visualcapitalist.com is all about trends and different things in the world that we can measure and just the way different groupings are living and what people are focusing on and what people are eating and what people are looking at on the internet and which is the most prevalent um, company as regards to downloads of television or Netflix or whatever it is. Uh, and it has all of these trends uh, and it's a, a remarkable website. And this article that I read was named the 50 most important life-saving breakthroughs in history. The 50 most important life-saving breakthroughs in history. And it led me to uh, the title of today's talk on this Easter Sunday, which is about the greatest breakthrough. Praise the Lord. And this, this article just made so much interesting reading. And it was saying that for most of civilized history, life expectancy fluctuated between 30 and 40 years of age. In fact, in 1770, if you lived to the age of 30, you were doing great. You were doing fantastic. And so we can see that now we live in an age where if you don't get to 80, something is considered to be wrong. Child mortality was all too common. And even for those who made it to adulthood, a long and healthy life was by no means guaranteed. Sanitation was poor, disease was rampant, and many medical practices were based on superstition or guesswork. 
But by the 20th century, there was an explosion of new technologies, treatments, and other science-backed practices, and they helped to increase global life expectancy, which we now get to enjoy uh, here in this century that we are a part of. We are so blessed to live in these days on so many levels. And when you think of all the things that we take for granted, you can just imagine what it must have been like back in the 1770s and so on. And so the, the breakthroughs that are credited with saving the most lives, and we're talking about billions of lives, are, uh, it's hard to believe the list, but toilets, synthetic fertilizers, blood transfusions, and vaccines are all accredited to saving, through the years, billions of lives. Meanwhile, things like pasteurization, good old pasteurized milk, water chlorination, antibiotics, and antimalarial drugs are credited with saving hundreds of millions of lives. And these are things that we don't even think about anymore, such as the success of all of these innovations and all of these breakthroughs. I'm bringing this word today in a time when a world is waiting, crying out, calling out, praying to God for a breakthrough. We want a breakthrough. We want to get back to being able to, to be with our loved ones, to hug people, to be able to have life as we knew it. And, and there's a cry for a breakthrough. But today on this Easter Sunday, I want to remind us of the greatest breakthrough, of the most important breakthrough, of the most significant breakthrough. And so we're going to be turning in our Bibles today. Our Easter scripture is 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14 to 21. And uh, get your Bibles open, get your iPads open, get your media devices open, get your physical Bibles open on 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14 to 21. And uh, here we go. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again to life. Praise God. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. He or she has become a new creation. The old is gone and the new is here. All of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us now the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you then on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. That's a key verse for someone that's just stumbled across this service this day. Be reconciled to God. God made Jesus who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in Jesus we might become the righteousness of God. Wow, that, that last verse never gets old to me. God made Jesus who had no sin to become sin for us so that in Jesus we might become the righteousness of God. Lord, may the truth of that just go to our hearts and minds this day and deep into our spirits and souls in Jesus' name. Amen. So brothers and sisters, this is so exciting. This is our scripture today and I want to talk to you about the greatest breakthrough life-saving breakthrough in the history of all mankind, past, present, and future. And obviously, we are looking at the Easter message and the great truth of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have three points for you today. And praise God, our first point today is all about breakthrough life. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we get to break through into life and we get to live a breakthrough life. So that's, that's the two points on this point. Bear with me. So on this topic of breakthrough life, understand that we get, because of what Jesus did with his death and resurrection, we get to break through into life, but we also get to live a breakthrough life. 
Now, before we get to these points, let me just say that before Jesus' breakthrough death and before his breakthrough resurrection through the grave and the tomb, he had lived a breakthrough life. He had lived an incredible life. In fact, no one in the history of humanity before or since had ever witnessed a life like Jesus lived. He broke through sin, living a sinless life. He broke through hate, living a loving life. He broke through stale religion, pointing to an intimate relationship with Father God. In fact, referring to God in prayer as our dad, our Abba, our father. And because he lived a breakthrough life, and because he lived an exemplary life, and because he lived a sinless life and a life of love, he was then accepted and acceptable as the breakthrough sacrifice, as the pure lamb of God who could and would take away the sin of the world. What an amazing breakthrough it was. The breakthrough would never have happened if Jesus had not lived a breakthrough life. But he did live a breakthrough life. And he showed humanity that it was possible to live a breakthrough life. You know, we have his example as the perfect life, the perfect one who lived the life that God can ordain. He showed that by having a deep relationship with the Father, by being filled with the Holy Spirit, and by not being bound by sin or the world, that it was possible to live a breakthrough life. And so he is our inspiration all of our days, and especially on this Easter Sunday. Thank God that Jesus lived a breakthrough life. If he had had one slip up, one failing, if he had got distracted, if he had missed it, then we wouldn't be celebrating on this day the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It serves, and his life serves, as the best example in all of humanity as to the best way to live towards people, your neighbor, and towards God. What an amazing life Jesus lived. What an amazing life Jesus is. So because of his perfect life, his sinless sacrifice, his agonizing death and his glorious resurrection, we go back to our two points. Number one, we get to break through into life. We gain access to the very life of God. Praise God. We get to be born again which is what we describe ourselves as believers because we know that we were once a certain way and we needed a fresh start and a new dawn and we couldn't dive back into our mother's wombs. No, we came, praise the Lord, into the embrace of our Father and we got to be renewed by His good Spirit and we had access to life and we broke through because we were born again by the Spirit of God. And the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living and active within our very lives. We can can now break through into a life that is full of forgiveness. We can live free. We can be delivered. We can live joyfully, glory to God. We can live as a new creation, as new creatures before the Lord, simply because we get to break through into life into real life, into God's life. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 said, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The new creation has come. The old is gone, factually, and the new is here. Praise God. We in Christ have broken into life, real life, purpose, purposeful life, meaningful life. And this is our lot as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Also, because of his death and resurrection, we get to live a breakthrough life. We get to live a breakthrough life because of his death, his resurrection, but also remember because of his example and the way that he showed us how to live. And so we get to live life to the full, glory to God. And we get to live a life of purpose and fulfillment. And we get to live a life that is full of God. And we get to live for God and we get to live for others. Verse 15 said, And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So one of the signs that we know that we have a breakthrough life is that we no longer just live for ourselves in self-absorption, in just focus, self-centeredness, or selfishness. We live for others and we live for God. And this is the path and the route to happiness. Glory to God. 
So here's something to ponder on on this Easter Sunday. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection, we can live a breakthrough life. Because he lived such an exemplary breakthrough life, we have an example of the breakthrough life and we can imitate and follow Jesus. And so the breakthrough life is one that is not controlled by the past, is not conformed to the world, is not overwhelmed by sin, and is not complete apart from the Lord Jesus Christ and his breakthrough life and spirit. This is our God, and this is what we're welcomed into today. Our second point today on this Resurrection Sunday, and what a delight to be able to bring this good news, is that Easter reminds us of a breakthrough death. This death of Jesus on the cross was the real deal sacrifice, the once and for all sacrifice. This was the fullest expression of God's love for the world. We know this from John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. This was a job that was fully done and well done. Glory to God. We know this because Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. He didn't do a half job. He didn't do just a job that needed patching up later. He did the full job, the complete job, and it is finished. Romans 6, verse 10 to 11 says, The death Jesus died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Count yourselves, consider yourselves, think of yourselves alive to God in Christ. Christ Jesus. You see, Easter reminds us of a breakthrough sacrificial death, which leads to breakthrough forgiveness, which then leads to breakthrough reconciliation between man and God, and it then leads us into a breakthrough life. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 said, all of this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us then the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed then to us this message of reconciliation. The breakthrough death of Jesus not only reconciles us to God, but it gives us the ministry of reconciliation where we can be reconciled to our neighbours, where we can love our enemies, where we, we can live lives that just take the world's breath away. What a privilege it is to be part of this breakthrough death and to receive all the blessings from the breakthrough death of Jesus Christ on the cross. When you truly know that by the death and sacrifice of Jesus, your sin has been forgiven and forgotten, you know that you are released into a breakthrough life, a life that is freer, a life that is greater, a life that is happier. It's so key that the people understand what has been offered to them during this Easter weekend. God wants everyone to break through into real forgiveness, forgiveness that has been won by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. It is forgiveness that he freely offers you. When your sins are forgiven, God wants you to know that they are forgotten. The past with all its sins, hurts, brokenness, guilt, and self-recrimination, is gone. It's totally nailed to the cross. It's been crucified with the Lord Jesus Christ and remembered no more. Jesus calls us to be a people who live a breakthrough life because he gave us a breakthrough death on the cross. What an amazing saviour we serve. And so, my brothers and sisters, on this Easter Sunday, we get the peak of the good news that is expressed by the words resurrection. And so, glory to God, we are going to celebrate today the breakthrough resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and offer a sacrifice for the sins of the Jewish nation once a year. And how do we know that the high priest's sacrifice was accepted and acceptable? Well, we know when he got out of there alive. And praise the Lord, 
Jesus came out of the tomb alive. Glory to God. And that tells all of humanity that Jesus' sacrifice as the spotless Lamb of God was accepted and is acceptable before the Lord, before the Father. And praise the Lord. How do we know that our sins are forgiven? How do we know that we can have breakthrough life? How do we know that we can have breakthrough forgiveness? Well, we know all of this because Jesus left the tomb. He walked out alive. Glory to God. After presenting himself before the Lord in the Holy of Holies, his sacrifice, his sacrificial blood, his body, he had just fully given himself for us. And praise the Lord, it was accepted. And the resurrection screams this out. Praise God, liberty for all of mankind forever and ever because he has risen. Wow. It never gets old, does it? And we never just get bored hearing about this because it is our liberation story. And praise the Lord, it is worth celebrating, not just on Easter Sunday, but every day of our lives. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you on this day what the resurrection confirms. Firstly, it confirms that Jesus was the perfect, acceptable, and accepted sacrifice. How do we know this? He walked out of the tomb alive. Secondly, it confirms that Jesus is the Son of God. Listen to this, Romans 1 verse 4. And Jesus Christ, our Lord, was shown to be the Son of God because God powerfully raised him from the dead by means of the Holy Spirit. What a breakthrough for mankind. For Jesus to be confirmed as the long waited for and anticipated Messiah, the resurrection proves it and underlines it and underscores it. And it says, this is the acceptable sacrifice, but this is also the Messiah, the Son of God. Glory to God. Thirdly, it confirms salvation in Christ. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Glory to God. No doubt about it. So praise God if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that he's been raised from the dead by the Lord, you will be saved. What a truth. What a truth this day. Fourthly, it confirms, the resurrection confirms life after death. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life in John 11 verse 25. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he or she live. Praise God. So not only do we have salvation, we have the promise, the confirmation of life after death. And then lastly, it confirms a glorious inheritance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we read in 1 Peter 1 verse 3 to 4. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. Kept in heaven for you. What power what powerful truth this is. All that has been confirmed for us, towards us, on our behalf, simply because Jesus broke through the grave, broke through the tomb, broke through death. He is the resurrection king. He is the resurrection. Resurrection is a person and his name is Jesus. Not just an event, not just an act in history. It is a person. And so if you want to enter into breakthrough life, you need to have a relationship with resurrection. His name is Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. And so we come to him. And when we come to him, praise God, we can thank God with all of our heart that there's confirmation in our hearts and in our souls and in our spirits that his sacrifice was acceptable because he was resurrected. We can rejoice that he truly is the Messiah, the Son of God, and know that the resurrection confirms this. We can praise the Lord of peace in our hearts that our salvation is secure because it's not based on our good acts, as bad as they are, but it's based on the great act of the cross and the resurrection that Jesus performed. Praise the Lord. We can have confidence in life after death, even when we're surrounded by pandemic and bad news. We can know that this life isn't the full stop after we die, but it's only the comma into an eternal life. And then it confirms an eternal inheritance that will never perish, spoil, or fade. Brothers and sisters, we are just so blessed to be the children of God. And I want to encourage you this very day to consider the greatest life-saving breakthrough in the history of mankind. 
Uh, and I want to thank God for all of the breakthroughs that have been wrought through history by incredible people. And you know what? Many of them have been phenomenal people and many of them have been Christians. And we thank God for even people within our own church who are working relentlessly in the health services and in research to bring about breakthrough against this pandemic. Christians in churches that we know within Dublin City working in different research labs that we know are working on breakthroughs to help humanity and to bless humanity. We thank God for blessing these people with brains and insights and so many scientific discoveries and discoverers were Christians. And we just bless the Lord for God's heart always to seek to help mankind. So God bless you this Easter. Remember that the most important life-saving breakthrough in the history of mankind was the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember that Jesus' life, death and resurrection changes everything and changed everything and brings about a mighty breakthrough for you and for me and for all mankind. And we can carry this message of reconciliation. Whoever you are, wherever you are from, God is for you and God is with you. It brings about a breakthrough life and it brings about breakthrough living, which is ours. And it means that we break through into eternal life and into future eternal living. So my brother, my sister, God bless you on this Easter Sunday, on this Resurrection Sunday. We believe in the God of the breakthrough. He has exemplified this breakthrough by the life that he lived, by the death that he died, by the resurrection, by the ascension, by the sending of his spirit, by the establishment of the church. This is a breakthrough God. And praise the Lord, from this day, we're going to anticipate a breakthrough life and breakthrough living. And praise God, we're going to believe and prophesy over our St. Mark's family of churches that the best is yet to come. And God has got breakthrough after breakthrough for us as a church, breaking through with the message of reconciliation into the city and island and beyond. And believing that God is going to take us from strength to strength. Praise the Lord. We love him. We bless him. We love you. We bless you. And we thank God for breakthrough on this Resurrection Sunday. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. We lift up one voice. We lift up one voice. We sing and we shout for joy. Thank you, Lord. Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time we've had together, Lord God. We want to thank you for just the freedom we've had to be able to worship you. We want to thank you, Lord God, for Emma and Linus and their breakthrough testimonies, their breakthrough stories, Lord God. We want to thank you for all that you have done in their lives and through their lives. We want to thank you for the songs that we've sung. We want to thank you for the word that Sean brought, Lord God. We want to thank you for the truth that you are still breaking through into our lives, Lord God. And we are so grateful 
on this Easter Sunday for all that you have done and all that you are continuing to do in and through us, Lord God. We bless you. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for all that you're doing, Lord God. Guys, if you have been blessed or if God has touched your life in any way through maybe the stories, through the songs, through Sean's word, we'd love to connect with you. Uh, if you want prayer for anything, if you want to reach out to us, uh, pastoralcare at stmarks.ie. Please email us and one of our pastors will get back to you and respond to you. We want to connect with you and we want to help you on this journey called faith as God continues to break through in your life. For everyone else, guys, have a blessed week. Have a great week and uh, we hope to see you soon. God bless.